This video shows how I'm dealing with selection in the RTS. We cover click to select, shift click to combine selections, and double click to select all of the units of a type for a given player. We'll also introduce our right click targets despite not having the ability to move yet. I should call out that this is not a simple tutorial. Tutorials generally show you how to fit small pieces together, but in practice you often need to cover so many things that the original tutorial suggestions don't even apply anymore. So while a little more complicated, I'll try to give you insight to all of my code choices. Let's start with info. It holds onto player, unit, and selectable. Info will be used as a central point of reference for interacting with a unit or structure. I'll dive into selectable after I get into a couple other areas, but that is the key reason it gets its selection. Player and unit come first. It's worth calling out that I struggled here. Originally, unit was the central reference point, and then other code would ask for neighboring components. The problem is that it meant anything else working with unit had to understand that relationship. It arbitrarily locked unit, player, and selectable to a specific hierarchy without exposing that requirement to the designer. The info class informs the designer about the requirements and still gives them control over where to get that data from. Unit is a scriptable object that only has the name. It will hold common information about the unit in play, and the name will be its unique identifier for comparisons. I'm not using lowercase name because I may have multiple files, multiple files for the same unit, such as tank normal and then tank scene three, which has self-damaging shots. Player has more details such as color and a list of units. You'll notice that this is that the list is not of type unit, but type info. Just for color testing, I did add three players. Add to player units is a small class which takes the current unit and adds it to the assigned player. I had considered putting this functionality into info, which already has reference to both, but I felt like I shouldn't combine that functionality there. I wouldn't necessarily think to look in that class for how and where a unit gets added. I don't want you to think I have some rule for why I chose this. There aren't rules for everything, but I might come across a great reason to go a particular direction later. Let's get into material customization. If I try to change the shared material when selecting a unit, every unit using that material will be affected by it. If I make changes to the material instead of the shared material, each unit has to hold its own instance of the material, duplicating all the settings and losing the potential to reduce draw calls. Material property blocks allow us to use the shared material and support different values within it. Since I'm planning on allowing different scripts to make changes to the material settings, I decided to keep a domain-free class to manage this. Material properties. Other classes will write to this. Unit color takes advantage of this by, by setting the material property for sheen color, effectively how the player's color will show up. As you can see, we use the material properties referenced from the fields to get to the block or the class's material property block. Then we set the color or float with the shader's field name. We can look up the field name in shader graph, or you can use the inspector's debug view on the material. Finally, we apply these changes. Unit selector is the same, except that it uses the update to make continuous changes to the shader. Effectively, this gives us our flash when selecting a unit. I should point out that I did not choose the, the flash effect on purpose. This was a happy accident. Basically, I accidentally lurped the sharpness and intensity together instead of just the intensity, but I liked it, so I used it. Don't expect that every good thing in professional work is on purpose. Be ready to change when some accident shows you a better way. Selectable is what triggers the unit to change its highlight view or call the select and unselect methods of the unit selector. You can see the Unity events that call on unit selector here. I chose to use Unity event because I want this part to be flexible for the designer. In the, this initial case, it's just highlighting color, 
but there will easily be a special selection sounds and custom operations with other unit events that occur on select. While I'm not taking advantage of this yet, I have good reason to believe I will. Selectable is triggered by Selection Manager. I should call out that in the last video I only had one manager class plus a test class for that manager, but now there are more, so I did create a manager's folder. This is an example of how I chose to ignore folder management until I have enough classes to classify a few. Selection Manager listens to the Interaction Manager for mouse button 1 and double click. On single click, manages the single click. I should point out the lack of comments. The method name on single click seems straightforward enough that it is not necessary to explain further. I recommend getting into the habit of ignoring comments, especially XML comments, unless absolutely needed. It's too easy for that habit to trigger a second habit of not putting enough effort into naming, causing your member names to suffer from complexity or lack of clarity. The first thing it checks is a helper class to see if the pointer is over the UI. This is using pointer event data to compare the mouse position to the UI objects. It generates an empty list of results, and it returns true if there are any found in the raycast. Assuming it's false, we can move on to a raycast against the 3D elements. Just prior, we find shift since that value is used in both conditions of the if statement. Here we gather info. Then if we're not pressing shift, but info or selectable or null in the hit result, then we click on nothing and we unselect everything. If we're still in the code, then we have an info object. If shift is on, then we add the item to, our, to the selected list and call it selected function. Otherwise, we unselect all and then select only the new one. I should call out that there is a risk behavior or a behavior risk here. If we are unselecting a group by clicking on one of the previously selected, then we are calling the unselect and immediately after calling select. This is a potential bug state as the designer might have different sets of actions managing unselect and select, and they could enter race conditions for its appearance with unselect winning. I'm considering that and a solution should I run into this would be to include passing in an info to ignore so it doesn't trigger the unselect. There, done. Double click acts the same as a single click, except that when it's adding, it's looping through every unit of the same type belonging to the same player. This is another spot I noticed a bug where distance is not used here. Here it is with the corrected check. You might look at this and say a more efficient way to do this is to get the square of the radius and the magnitude of the distance for comparison so no square root is executed, and you would be right. However, I find that type of performance improvement usually doesn't matter on user-triggered items that are relatively rare and don't spread out much. This only happens on double-clicking a unit. If this were something happening every frame, especially something that might occur for every unit, causing the math to be repeated excessively, I would be following it. So now we have the target manager. This doesn't really get used yet, but I had started on the right-click movement actions before I, started, before I decided to stop to get the video recorded. The target manager listens to the mouse button to click events or right-click events and sets a vector three observable with a value that is titled last right-click. Nothing uses this yet, but the functionality is there and I know plenty of code will. But what is an observable? An observable is a named variable free from class structures. Because it's a scriptable object, it's designer controlled, so we can drag and drop it, rather than the code needing to check the state of a variable every single update, they don't have updates at all, but listen for the changes of a value. The vector three observable will alert the listeners when it changes. This significantly reduces redundant code. Code calls that only pop up every single frame just to check a variable and then disappear. A key point to make about this is that we can get around a lot of potential spaghetti code here by having generally accessible data and change events so we don't need to know the structure of where it comes from.